Hey friends, it is such an honor to be able to speak the Word of God to you this Sunday. Uh, even though there is government restrictions and we're trying to follow through the regulations, uh, the Word of God is not chained, as the Bible says, and we are privileged uh, to be able to spread the Word of God and uh, build a church even in this uh, difficult time. Uh, well, this last Sunday, we have started a new series called Full Access, and we were so privileged to uh, set the tone uh, with Pastor Sam's uh, introduction, his message on Full Access. And I'm just going to follow through in, in this message today on Full Access, especially in relation to prayer and uh, in relation to how we approach God. You may remember the story in the Gospels where a, a desperate mother comes to Jesus asking for a miracle for her daughter. Uh, she was a Gentile and Jesus may have come a bit rudely uh, at her. This incident seems to be incredibly rude because he basically said that uh, he should not take away the bread from the children and give it to dogs. But the big point, the moral of the story is that the bread, which in this case is the miracle, the healing, the grace and the favor, belongs to the children. And friends, if the Bible calls us sons and daughters, the children of God, that means that we have access to the bread we have access to His grace, His favors, uh, his, his miracles, His breakthroughs, the healing. This is so important to understand that you and I, as the children of God, we are invited to the table. Um, I want to read to you uh, my uh, verse for today, and it's in Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verse 16. Hebrews 4, 16, and this is what it, what it says. It's a powerful scripture that I'm sure all of us know. And I want to challenge you to take it to your heart and live it out this week. Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let me read that again, friend. Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And Father, I pray that even right now you would illuminate our understanding and give us a revelation to understand who we are and how we can approach you and find our miracle as we pray because we have full access in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, um, I want to just unfold a couple of principles for you to understand as, as you come before God um, in the revelation of full access. Number one, understand your place. Understand your place. The Bible says here that we can approach the throne of grace. Now, friends, that is your place. As a son and a daughter, your place is is at the throne. You know, uh, we could ask a simple question, where is Jesus now? Oftentimes when we lead people to pray for salvation, we ask them to invite Jesus to come into their hearts. But of course we understand that realistically, it's the Holy Spirit who is invited to live inside of us as we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is located at the right hand of the Father. We understand that really uh, clearly from the New Testament that Jesus is seated in a place of authority at the Father's right hand. The right hand in the scripture always means a place of power, a place of authority, a place of influence. And that's where Jesus is seated today. He ascended to the heavens and he is seated at the Father's right hand. But in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, 
the Bible says that we have been also resurrected and seated in the heavenlies uh, with Christ. In other words, to make it really simple, not only Jesus has that place, that position of authority, but in Him, in Christ, we also are seated at the throne. We also are seated at the Father's right hand. That's incredibly important to understand. That means that we are not some beggars asking for a miracle, for some crumbs falling down from the table. We are sons and daughters seated at the right hand of the Father. You know, in Hebrews chapter 7, the Bible says that Jesus always lives to intercede for us. And we as New Testament believers in Christ, we are seated in that place also to intercede. So when we pray, we pray for that position being seated at the throne of grace. So that's incredibly important. Number one, understand your place. Your place is at the throne of grace. Number two, come with confidence. Come with confidence. Friends, as we pray, we, 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 we don't pray begging. We pray with authority. We pray with confidence. Um, and in, in the same letter in the book of Hebrews in chapter 10, we, we read that we can draw near to God in full assurance of faith. We don't come trembling. We come with full assurance. I'm reminded of um, the story in the Old Testament. The Queen Esther came before the king. Even though it was not the right time and she was risking her life. But she came with faith. Friends, we can come to the Father uh, in full confidence. Uh, that is... Our direct call in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 12 we read that in him and through faith we may approach God with freedom and confidence let me ask you this question how do you pray do you pray with this revelation that your place is at the right hand of the Father and that you don't need to come to him as a beggar but you come asking for bread with freedom and full confidence you know i have three sons and let me tell you when they are hungry they don't come begging um, and even even better when they need money they don't come begging they should but they don't come begging uh, they come uh, knowing their rights as sons uh, maybe a bit too much but they come with confidence I want to challenge you to have that kind of approach, uh, freedom and confidence. Number three, uh, take favor. You know, we read that uh, we come with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace. Uh, you know, this is really important as we pray because uh, we pray to, to get the miracle from Jesus to, to get the favor. Oftentimes when we pray, it's like an invisible force goes before uh, the miracle. Prayer is the invisible uh, force, the invisible work, in, invisible labor that then burns into the physical, the visible. You know, when, when I was a uh, <clears throat> teenager, uh, I, I had a chance to uh, be on the same stage leading worship with uh, Reinhard Bonnke's main intercessor at that time, um, Suzette Hettings. Uh, and, and her stories were incredibly fascinating. Uh, before Reinhard would do his big crusades in Africa, she would go there with uh, intercession. And she would mobilize prayer warriors from the whole nation where they would have the big crusades. And it was it was so inspiring. I mean, that that was probably uh, the conference or 
you know, the, 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 the week uh, where I started to just burn with passion for intercession. Uh, friends, uh, we see Paul the Apostle asking for intercession so much. Almost in every one of his letters, he is asking the church to pray for him. Why is that? There is power in intercession. There is power when we pray. And uh, there, is, there is power when we pray with confidence, getting the favors, getting the, the grace and finding mercy. So don't forget, uh, take the favor from God. Now that's like reaching out your hand and grasping what you're praying for by faith. And finally, number four, we read that uh, we will uh, get it. We, we come to the throne and we find grace to help us in our time of need. So that's my final point. Number four, discern the time or discern the timing in the time of need. You know, if there ever was a time of need for us in our generation, it is now. It, it is now. The whole world is in a turmoil. Uh, we have friends that are getting sick, and friends that are dying, literally dying in this time. Just this morning, I, I got the news of um, our neighbor, a former neighbor uh, um, that died. She was our age, and both of her parents died just before Christmas, and uh, just now she died as well. We have people getting sick and dying literally every day around us. If there ever was a time of need, it is now. But the Bible says here that we have confidence to approach the throne of grace to find help in our time of need. Discern the time. This is a time to use your full access. It's a time of harvest. It's a time of mobilizing the church for what I believe should be the greatest revival in history. Now, friends, as I close, I want to challenge you. Uh, you have full access. So when you pray, when you intercede, use the full access. Don't come as a beggar. Don't come as a second-class citizen. You have the right to come to the table. You are a son and a daughter. The bread is there for all of us. Not just the crumbs that fall down from the table. The bread, the favor, the miracle is there for you. I want to challenge you to grasp it. Take the grace. Receive what you are praying for with confidence. I'm going to close with praying now. And whatever is your need at this moment, I want to challenge you. Come with confidence as a son and as a daughter and receive your miracle today. Father, I pray right now using the authority you gave me as a son. And I pray, Lord, that whatever, whatever we are requesting now, whatever we are asking for with faith and confidence, that you would give it to us in this time of need. I pray, God, for the harvest, the spiritual harvest. I pray for individual miracles and breakthroughs at this point. I pray that in this coming season, we receive so much physically from what we are praying for in the spiritual. And I release it right now, friend, that even in this week, you would receive the miracle you are praying for right now in Jesus' name. We love you and we're praying for you. Let us know how we can serve you in this season. Amen.